On August 27, 1939, the Heinkel HE-178 became the world's first jet-propelled aircraft. Producing 1,100 pounds of thrust, the engine pushed the plane to speeds of 435 miles per hour. But it burned fuel at such a high rate, it could only remain airborne for 10 minutes. Engine. By September of 1937, Von Oheim's team had a working hydrogen-burning prototype. Further work led to an engine that burned kerosene, a far more practical fuel. By early 1938, Heinkel gave his development team the green light to develop a flight test engine titled the HES-3. This experimental model was strapped to an HE-118 dive bomber and tested in flight beginning in May of 1939 and ending a few short months later when the HES-3 burned out beyond repair. But thanks to valuable information gleaned during those few critical months of testing, the way forward was clear. Out of the ashes of the HES-3, a new model arose, like a Phoenix. Engineers went straight into production on an experimental aircraft, dubbed the Heinkel HE-178. August 27, 1939, the HE-178 flexed its wings on its first official test flight. Airborne for scarcely five minutes, the test pilot radioed that the aircraft had no vibration like a propeller engine and that everything was smooth and felt wonderful. Despite initial resistance in support of the project, Von O'Hein had leapt far ahead of the British designer Frank Whittle, who, thanks to delays brought by the onset of war, did not fly his own experimental jet until May of 1941. Heinkel pressed on, and based on the lessons learned with the 178, began building the HE-280, the world's first fully operational jet fighter. In spite of its capabilities, the Air Ministry was still not impressed. Powered by two Heinkel turbojet engines slung under the wings, the plane was designed to reach a speed of 405 miles per hour. This was about 100 miles per hour faster than most existing fighter aircraft in the world. On the 30th of March, 1941, history was made as the HE-280 took to the air for the first time. This first practical jet fighter was also the first aircraft to be equipped with an ejector seat. There were still ongoing problems with the jet's engines. This was a very new technology at a time when there was limited funding in the Third Reich for untried aircraft. Germany was in the midst of launching full-blown war. The HE-280 would be doomed by a combination of politics and technical challenges. Had the German government given support to production, the HE-280 could conceivably have gone into production earlier in the war and reached the Luftwaffe earlier than was ultimately the case with the ME-262. Over the next months, progress was slow due to the ongoing engine problems. A second engine design, the Heinkel HES-30, was also undergoing development, both as an interesting engine in its own right, as well as a potential replacement for the HES-8. In the meantime, alternative power plants were considered, including the Argus AS-014 pulse jet that famously powered the V-1 flying bomb. But Heinkel was not the only developer interested in the twin turbojet concept. 
A design team led by Willie Messerschmidt began work on Project 1065 in the fall of 1938, a full nine months before Heinkel was able to demonstrate the HE-178 to Luftwaffe commanders. Because the Messerschmitt jet fighter allowed for a proper center of gravity through a slightly swept wing design, had considerable fuel capacity for its voracious BMW 003 engines, and could handle well at low speeds, the Reich Aviation Ministry, or the RLM, ordered three prototypes in July of 1940. The HE-280 project would ultimately be abandoned. These new prototypes fell under the label Messerschmitt 262, or the ME-262. The ME-262A-1A Swallow was the first production model of the ME-262. The body was manufactured with four MK-108 30mm cannon mounted in the nose to aid in its role as an interceptor. Trial flights to test the first ME-262 V1 frame design commenced long before the BMW 003 engines were ready for flight. Test results were enough to secure further interest from the RLM. In July of 1941, as the German war machine blitzkrieged its way through Europe, five more prototypes were ordered. In November of 1941, the ME-262V1 prototype was fitted with the long-awaited BMW 003 engines. In the spring of 1942, test pilot Fritz Vandal climbed into the powerful new machine, eager to test its limits in the air. However, upon takeoff, both BMWs experienced immediate failure, and Vandal was forced to limp back to base. Subsequent tests with other engine designs, like the UMO 004A, fared better. In July of 1942, Vendel climbed into the ME 262V3 prototype and declared its handling and design as extremely impressive. Steps to advance this design would have commenced rapidly. However, the V3 prototype met with disaster and was accidentally destroyed during its second trial flight. Even with orders for jet fighter prototypes and the apparent buzz associated with the rapid advancements, the RLM remained indecisive. Heated discussions were the norm with decision makers about production of the ME-262 and an improved version of the Messerschmitt BF-109 piston-powered fighter dubbed the ME-209. Field Marshal Erhard Milch, as a very conservative Air Inspector General of the Luftwaffe, favoured the piston-powered ME-209 to the radical and still unproven ME-262. However, the need for progress and the uneasy state of the war in 1943 led the High Command to overrule him. Fighter ace Adolf Galland, the Luftwaffe's youngest Lieutenant General in Germany at the time, was an early and outspokenly stubborn supporter of the advanced ME-262. After a series of test flights, he remarked on the new fighter. It was as if an angel is pushing you. Galland's overwhelming support for the ME-262 resulted in the RLM's order for 100 production ME-262s. Regardless of Galland's enthusiasm for the fighter, he was a pilot, not an engineer, and problems inherent in the new technologies proved very difficult to overcome. The main challenge came from the new jet engines. 
these would endure much greater stresses than conventional piston engines. By 1943, the Reich was running out of such metals as tungsten and chromium, necessary for the high temperatures native to jet power. Testing was exhaustive as engineers tried to find ways to cut corners in order to make...